You don't need to be a trained chef with fancy tools and ingredients to make great food. I'm a third generation turkey farmer and I've been cooking my whole life. Whether it's cooking for friends over a fire in the backyard or simply throwing something together for the wife and kids, I've picked up some tips and tricks along the way to make good food great. I want to share those with you and take the fear out of cooking. Hi everyone, I'm Eric. Welcome back to The Chubby Farmer where I take the fear to cooking. Today I'm joined by my son Maze. Today we're going to be working with turkey leftovers. So you've cooked that whole roast turkey and you don't know what to do with the leftovers. Today we're going to be making turkey pot pie and we're going to start with a homemade crust. So Maze, I'm going to need your help with this one. You're going to start with two and a half cups of flour, a cup of cold chilled butter cut into cubes, and a little dish of ice water. We're also going to add a little bit of salt. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add about just over half of this to the bowl. Do you want to do that for me? Like this? No, you can just shake it in like this. Uh, okay. Can Here, let's move this ice water out of the way a little bit. There, don't pour. There. Can you do it? Yeah. Just keep shaking, keep shaking, keep shaking. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. More, more, more. Here, I'll help you out. Okay, that's good. No, oh, hang on. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now remember, when you're making a pie crust, cold is key. Some people even say you're supposed to put your flour in the fridge. We didn't do that today, but we're going to add our chilled butter. Actually, first we're gonna add salt. So we've got about a cup and a half of flour in our bowl. Now we're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Now with baking, you wanna be more precise. With cooking, it doesn't matter so much. Next, we're gonna add our chilled butter. And we're going to use our pastry, I don't even know what you call this. Pastry blender. Our pastry blender. To mix it up. Maze, do you want to do this? Yeah. Just go around like this? Yeah, I know what to do. Okay. You want about pea-sized lumps of coated butter in your mixture? <laughs> yep. Push down hard. Yeah. Try to get the butter broken up. That's what you want to do. And the flour will coat it as you go. <laughs> I can do some? Okay. All you're looking to do is break this butter up into smaller pieces and get it kind of coated with flour. You can see it's break, breaking up nicely. And the bowl is about to be breaking up nicely. <laughs> you think I'm going to break the bowl? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you want to work relatively quickly because you don't want your butter to warm up too much. So it doesn't melt and ruin the whole thing? Exactly. Okay, once it looks about like that, we're going to clean this thing out. Now, do you want to dump the rest of that flour in here? Yeah. Okay, dump that in. Okay, I don't like that. Some pie crust recipes call for sugar to be added, but because this is a savory dish and not a sweet dish, we're going to skip the sugar. Now, okay, we want to add ice water to make this form. It smells like in, cheese. It smells like cheese? Hmm, probably the butter. So we're going to add this ice water kind of a tablespoon at a time. You want it to be just wet enough for it can to stick it? together. You absolutely can, but not too wet for it to not be able to roll out. So grab this and just do about four of them in here to start. Yep, yeah, one. I can count. Okay, don't get the ice here. Let's, uh, yeah, there you go. Maybe we should use an actual tablespoon. Be easier, hey? Here, use a spoon. Done. One. Now we use ice water just because, like I said, we want to keep this thing cold. Good job. Counting in French. Let's see. Mix this around a little bit. It looks like we're going to need a few more, so add two more. Like I said, you don't want to add too much, so go slow. A couple at a time. Yep, good. Another one. Um, well, just add just a few at a time is what I mean. Why do I feel like you're making cheese? <laughs> I don't know. I think we're going to need a couple of more yet. It's starting to stick together, you can tell, which is good. But there's still lots of loose flour in the bottom. So add two more, Maze. Okay, let's mix this up and see. If you pinch it together and it sticks, then it's just about good. I think we're going to need one or two more yet. Because it's still pretty crumbly. Okay, throw two more in, Maze. You don't want to overwork your dough. Because then it gets kind of... Tough isn't quite the right word, but... That's probably the closest word. Okay, one more. And then I think that's good. Good. Now you want to 
mix that water in and form it into a ball. And then you're going to want to move that into the fridge while we do the rest of our recipe. So if it can't be formed into a ball, we're going to add more water. Okay, can I help you? Sure. See if you can clump it into a ball already. Not quite. Okay, add two more tablespoons. Again, again, again. Yeah, but it's got to be a little stickier than that. You don't want to squeeze it too hard. Well, that's close, actually. Let's see. No, add, add two more. You washed your hands, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I'm going to make this into a ball, and then we're going to wrap it in saran wrap and throw it in the fridge. You probably do need one more. Do I need one more? Okay, one more. Mace thinks we need one more. He's probably right. We're on the dangerous point of overworking this dough already, but that's what we're here to do. Take the fear out of cooking. This is what happens if you overwork it a little bit. I think it'll still turn out. You're right, Mace. That feels a lot better. Bonk. Bonk. Next time, I'm putting this bowl on a mat because it's very loud. There, that's perfect. Look how that sticks together. That's going to be plenty of dough for our recipe. All right, we're going to wrap this ball up in saran wrap and put it in the fridge while we move on to making our filling. All right, now we're going to start our turkey pot pie filling. So we're going to start with about a third cup of butter. We're going to eyeball that a little bit. This is key in making your roux later. Oh, Dad, do it. Can I do that part? Sure, you can move it around a little bit. Let's get that out of the way. We're going to melt that butter, and then we're going to add our onions. Here, let me see. Grab those onions and toss them in there. Good. I'm going to saute those onions. And once those onions are a little bit soft, we're going to add our garlic. Just until it's fragrant, because we don't want to burn the garlic, because then it'll taste bitter. I don't want that on low heat because you don't want anything to burn. This uh, like element, my yeah, like your finger. This element seems to have a bit of a hot spot right in the middle, so we just want to kind of be mindful of that. Okay, you can add a tablespoon of this oh. garlic. Again, use minced garlic. It's really easy. There's a lot of it in the jar. It lasts a long time in your fridge. Is good? Yeah, perfect. Just lop that in there. Smell good? Yeah. Good. Okay, move that around. Kind of let that mix till it's fragrant. A couple of bigger chunks of onion. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, I know. Doesn't garlic smell the best? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I hope I'm just not like this. <laughs> Are you Ukrainian by any chance? Half Ukrainian, half Mennonite? Yeah. Okay, now you can dump in a can of mushrooms. Oh. Oh, we've got a can of sliced mushrooms. You can use fresh if you want. Like the whole thing? Yep, toss the whole thing in there. <laughs> Yay. If you're using fresh mushrooms you'll want to add them a little bit earlier because they need a little more time to cook down okay let that warm up a little bit now I'm really disappointed because normally when I make turkey pot pie I add a boatload of thyme and I'm all out of time so unfortunately this one will be timeless in a bad way you can add whatever spices you like to this. You can throw in some uh, rosemary, like I said, thyme. We're gonna add some salt and pepper here right away. Are kind of those add... classic savory things. Oh. Are we gonna add any maize? Maize? Yeah, maize. <laughs> Not this time. So once this is warmed through and your onions are kind of starting to turn translucent, you're gonna add flour to coat everything. So top, tip that flour in here, maize. Kind of sprinkle it in. You want, it, you want this flour to kind of coat all the vegetables. That'll kind of prevent it from your roux getting lumpy. Can I just dump the Yeah, go in the ahead. Middle? Okay, let's quickly stir that so it doesn't get lumpy. So we want to stir that around for about two minutes just to let that kind of coat up and not brown necessarily, but get everything coated. Like light brown. Try to incorporate it with the butter, make yeah. a little paste. Wait, I can't see butter. Now, Maze, do you want to add a pinch of salt? A pinch? Yeah, like three fingers kind of pinched. Yeah, like that. Yep, toss that in there. Good, and you want to crack some pepper in there? 
There's the pepper grinder. Okay, crack that in there. Here, let's see. I think you're going the wrong way. <laughs> you like pepper? Mmm, that smells good. Okay, now we're going to pour our chicken broth in. You'll notice that this is the wrong color for chicken broth. It's actually beef broth, but I'm out of chicken broth. Okay, pour this in while I stir it. Once again, you kind of want to stir as you're pouring things in. Go over because it'll drip down the edge. Yeah. Yeah, pour that in. You can pour it faster, yeah, it doesn't matter. Whoa, I slopped some over. So if you did it right, it won't be lumpy. And if it's lumpy, that's all right. Practice makes perfect. Now the point here is to let this thicken. So we're gonna cook this up until it boils. And that flour is gonna help this to thicken. I splashed it again. So you wanna get that to a simmer. You don't wanna add your milk too soon because you don't want the milk to burn. So we're gonna let this flour and concentrate beef broth and butter just to get to a boil, Can I drink thicken up. This? Sure, you do you, man. It doesn't take long. You can tell it's getting thicker already. Now, at this point, you can use, can I yeah, whatever kind of veggies you want. I like frozen veggies because it's easy. So pour some of those in, Maze. Not too many because you don't want to lose your sauce. So pour about, pour about, actually pour them into here. You want about a cup of veggies, maybe a little more, a cup and a half. So that's about half full, Maze. A little more, a little more. Mm, these are some old looking veggies. A little more. Good. Let's dump that in and see how it looks. Now, if you're using fresh veggies, you want to get them in there a little sooner because they need more time to cook and soften up. How's the taste, Maze? We could probably put a few more in here. It tastes cold. It tastes cold? I'm going to put just a couple more in there. Okay. Okay, and now we're going to add our meat. Our turkey, like we've said, is already cooked, so it doesn't need to cook. You just want to get it in there and warm it up. This is about two or three cups. Now, you can add as much or as little as you like. I might not add all of this because I don't want to have too dry of a filling. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> looks like we can get away with putting it all in. So there's two or three cups of turkey. We can get away with it now. Stir that together. Give it a little taste. This one needs a little more salt. So we're gonna sprinkle some salt in there. I love pepper, so I'm gonna add a little more cracked pepper. Add some more. So go for whatever consistency you like. This one's a little thicker. If you like it a little saucier, you can either make more sauce or you can add fewer ingredients. But once those are all in, Give them a chance to warm up, and then we're going to top it with that pie crust we made earlier. I just realized at this point that we forgot to add our milk, which we probably should have done before we added our veggies and meat, but we'll add it now and see what happens. So this is going to make it a little thinner again, but it's going to add that creamy flavor. So two-thirds cup of milk or heavy cream. This is coffee cream, which will do just fine. Mix that around. Just to incorporate that and heat through, and there we go. All right, now that our filling is all cooked up, we're gonna roll out our pie crust that's been sitting in the fridge and cover this puppy up. So let's flatten that out a little bit. You wanna roll it, Maze? Okay, flatten it out. We've got a handy little mat here that shows us how big we need to go. We're aiming for 12 inches and I think we've got plenty of crust. All right. If you've done it right, it's gonna be hard to roll out because it'll be nice and chilled. That butter is firmed back up. It's going to make a nice flaky pie crust. We've got to try to get it over this big circle. I'll move over and give you some space. Helps to be heavier, hey? <laughs> Should I go again for a bit? You got it? Got this to the 12 inches here. Okay, you got to get all the sides to the 12 inches. I think this is too long. That's okay. We're going to cut it. Once we've draped it over there, we're going to cut it to shape, to fit. It might crumble a little bit. That's okay. You can kind of piece it back together. Check for your thick spots. Roll them out. 
we'll just patch it up. A few pieces like this. Doesn't have to look pretty because we're going to cut it to form on the pan. Yeah, it probably is, but that's good. You want it a bit bigger than your pan. Okay, let's pull this into place. Let's smooth our top because we're going to add our crest over top of that. Good. Now, let's see if we can do this without breaking it. Okay, that worked out not too bad. This is a fairly thick crust, which is okay. Now we're going to take this knife and just cut around the edge like this. Okay, doesn't have to look perfect. We're going to cut a few slits in it. Salty so that it bubbles over in the middle instead of the sides. Good. Okay, we're going to give this a quick egg wash just so it browns up nice. So you're going to go one egg. Oh, sorry, I cracked it. Now a splash of milk. Can I do it? Yep. Just a splash. I thought you, you were going to pour it in. Good. <laughs> That's fine. Mix that around a little bit with a fork. Good. Now do you want to paint it on? Ooh, I get to paint. Yeah. So take a brush, dip that in your egg wash, paint the whole thing. Cover the whole thing. There you go. That's going to make it nice and brown. Mm -hmm. Keep dipping. You're going to put lots in there, yeah. Get it right to the edges. Spread it around a little bit. Mmm, that's going to be good. Now we're going to throw this in a 400 degree oven for 45 minutes to an hour. You want, it's a tricky balance between getting your crust to brown and getting your insides heated through. So keep an eye on it. If your crust starts to get brown before 45 minutes is up, you're going to want to make a little tent on it, but we'll cover that when we get to it. Okay, now we're going to put on some of this coarse salt. Sprinkle that on just like that. And into the oven it goes. All right, we've had this in the oven for 45 minutes and it looks perfectly done to me. The inside's bubbled up over the top. So we're going to scoop this out and give it a taste test. Stab some of that turkey. There you go. Now blow on that. Blow on it, it's going to be hot. <laughs> okay, take a bite and let me try. My turn. Mmm. Oh. Our pie crust is my favorite part. I'd say it has a buttery, flaky crust. Can you say that? Buttery, flaky crust. It's nicely done. Like and subscribe for more.